So David will be speaking to us about the myth of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and some of the work that David has worked um, very hard and diligently on to commemorate August 6th. So please welcome David Lasky. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, quite a parade today. Um, we shouldn't glorify war, and I claim Remembrance Day is not to glorify war, but to give us the incentive to find our road to peace without war. Because when we can end the use of war, then all those who have died in peace can rest in peace, as peace should be their memorial. The other thing that I think quite often, being married to a Hiroshima survivor, uh, I can, uh, 58 years ago, during the Korean War, my service overseas included two and a half years in Japan. It was there I met my late beloved wife of 53 years, Kinuko Toe, a survivor of the first atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Having survived, she felt that her principal responsibility in life was to promote nonviolence and relate her experience to others by telling people the horrors of that first atomic bomb. Now, most people and history in general claims it was used to uh, save American lives and in the war. And that has been proven by records that came to light and it is not really, it was not used to save lives but to test the bomb and uh, they didn't have to use it. There's quite a few people in the States and the people that were in charge of the war effort at that time and uh, they've all made statements and it's all on the internet and I think they're worth listening to again. Uh, <clears throat> Former President Dwight Eisenhower, I was against it on two counts. First, the Japanese were ready to surrender, and it wasn't necessary to hit them with that awful thing. Second, I hated to see our country be the first to use such a weapon. Former President Herbert Hoover, the use of the atomic bomb with its indiscriminate killing of women and children revolts my soul. U.S. Admiral William Leahy, use of this barbarous weapon at Hiroshima and Nagasaki was of no material assistance in our war against Japan. We had anticipated an ethical, we had adapted an eth ethical standard common to the Dark Ages. MacArthur's advisor, Norman Cousins, when I asked General MacArthur about the decision to drop the bomb, I was surprised to learn he hadn't even been consulted. What I asked would his advice have been? He replied, he saw no military justification for dropping the bomb. The Frank Report. I told Oppenheimer that it would be a very serious mistake to use the bomb against the cities of Japan, and that's by Leo Slitter. The Frank Report, we believe that these considerations make the use of nuclear bombs for an early unannounced attack against Japan inadvisable. Director of Naval Intelligence, Elias Zacharias, just when the Japanese were ready to capit capitulate, capitulate, we went ahead and introduced to the world the most devastating weapon it had ever seen. It was wrong on strategic grounds and wrong on human humanitarian grounds. Under Secretary of State at the time, if surrender could have been brought about in May 1945 or even in June, before the entrance of the Soviet Russia into the war, the use of the atomic bomb, the world would have been the gainer if they had not used it. U.S. Brigadier General Carter, when we didn't need to do it, and we knew we didn't need to do it, and they knew we didn't need to do it. We used them as an experiment for the two atomic bombs. Assist Assistant Secretary of War John McCoy, 
I believe we missed an opportunity of effecting a Japanese center surrender satisfactory to us without the use, without the necess necessity of dropping the bomb. Under Secretary of Navy Ralph Laird, in my opinion, the Japanese war was really won before we even used the bomb. Assistant Secretary to the Navy, Louis Strauss, it seemed to me that such a weapon was not necessary to bring the war to a successful conclusion, that once used, it will find its way into the armaments of the world, which is what happened. Albert Einstein, the man attributed uh, for the science and the, uh, the uh, theory of, uh, of, of uh, the theory to make the bomb, he says, I made one great mistake in my life when I signed a letter to President Roosevelt recommending that the atom bomb be made, Albert Einstein. Now, since the Freedom of Information Act, uh, all kinds of information has come to light, and uh, there's an interesting article here in Common Dreams, um, and it's the myth behind the Hiroshima story. It says, uh, <clears throat> this year, or as always, there will be a few token comments lamenting the regrettable deaths of civilians, countered by further justification of righteousness of the act. It is widely and fervently believed that this attack was necessary to beat the Japanese and in the World War II. But such belief is a myth, originating as the government propaganda and perpetrated, perpetrated by each U.S. administration since Truman and right down and, and to uh, the last uh, president, uh, they all take the line that it was necessary to use this weapon to defeat Japan, which is not true. Numerous books, numerous books have now class, declassified relevant government information document belying bely such assertions. There is strong evidence that most decisive factor are already pointed to a successful conclusion of the war without the use of the bombs or a large invasion force. A more accurate assessment indicates that the bombs were detonated in the pursuit of scientific and technical knowledge and to intimidate a powerful and intransigent Soviet Union. Some s historians suggest that the weapons were used mainly because we had them and we wanted to see and demonstrate to the world what they could do. These are sobering and disturbing conclusions. Americans would much prefer to believe that they simply took the necessary steps and appropriate action to end the brutal conflict. They don't want to admit that they incinerated and irradiated all those human beings for any other than the most noble of imperatives. They adamantly resist the imputation that our misguided and misinformed leaders coldly sacrificed so much life to further their own purposes. When you analyze all of these facts, the bomb should not have been used. Japan was seeking surrender in April. Well, actually in January down through to April, well before August the 6th, and they were all ignored by, by the uh, Americans. And further, they had Japan totally defeated. Like on the night of March the 9th and 10th, 1945, a wave of 300 American bombers struck Tokyo killing 100,000 people, dropping nearly 1,700 tons of bombs. The planes ravaged much of the capital city, completely burning out 16 square miles and destroying a quarter of a million structures. A million residents were left homeless. Now this is March. Then in May, 11 weeks later, came the greatest air raid of the Pacific War when 520 giant B-29 Super Force bombers unleashed 4,500 tons of incendiary bombs on the heart of the already battered Japanese capital. Generating a gale force winds, the exploding incendiaries obliterated, obliterated uh, Tokyo's commercial center and railway yards and consumed the Ginza Entertainment District. Two days later, on May 25th, a second strike of 502 Super Force bombers raining down 4,000 tons of explosive. Together, these two raids destroyed 56 square miles of Tokyo. 
millions left homeless, houses destroyed. And then, on top of that, in August, they unleashed weapons that were never known to man. To man. And uh, with no warning, they didn't drop leaflets like sometimes they claim they did, but it was not done. So therefore, when you're seeking justification, Japanese troops did commit atrocity during the war, and the government should answer, the Japanese government should answer to those demands. Also, you should likewise pursue the American government should answer for the use of these two atomic bombs, which were not necessary to win the war. And therefore, I feel these facts are being hushed up and nobody pays much attention to them anymore. Yet you hear other demands. We should concentrate and get both demands together and start from there. Thank you very much.